Hello, everyone, and welcome to a very special broadcast 
from Mar- Marmoris Esports. We've got two teams that you might not recognize from here, but have a storied history. You've got Quetzalcoatl and you have JMU Dukes. My name is K-Wing here with Glitch. Glitch, pretty special circumstances bringing these two teams to our wonderful channel to get broadcasted for their bronze medal match in UGC. Right, and this third place match is going to be definitely a, a, a game to talk about. We have the then undefeated Quetzalcoatl uh, from, from Pio Phoenix uh, going 10-1 and one against the JMU Dukes. And in this third place match, it'll be a battle of attrition and just just be a test of wills to see who's going to be able to take home the bronze medal. Because even though it's just a third place medal, you still have to fight for bragging rights. You have to fight for pride. Absolutely. You really do. And there is some incredible talent here. Um, This is, of course, the premier title division. This is the GM to top 500. Um, And there's a lot of really awesome you know, bragging rights on the line. And like right, you said, you have right. to fight for pride. You have to fight for those bragging rights. And, you know, like you said, pride on the line here. And speaking of pride, actually, there is some really amazing things happening. If you want to get in on action like this, there is the Rainbow Open that Mara Morris Esports is hosting ourselves on this channel with, uh, signups closing on Sunday. So if you want to get in on that and get in on some fun Overwatch action yourself, you got one, two, three days to sign up for it. And uh, if you want to get in on action, just like the members of Quetzalcoatl and JMU Dukes, always your opportunity. As well as just trying to join in the Mamoist Esports Discord channel itself that they can find in the mm-hmm. command in the Twitch, in the Twitch chat of so be sure to be sure to use that command in Twitch chat and join and join the fund as well. And why not? It's free from what I hear. I don't see any, I don't see bad issues. <laughs> it's free from what I hear. It, you, you know, completely agree. It sure completely is. <laughs> it sure is free. It's just like the, it's like the YouTubers when they tell you to subscribe, it's like, it's free and you can leave the discord at any time, which is true. Yeah. It is free. You can leave the discord at any time. No one's, no one's holding me hostage. I am not being hel- no, held no, against my I will. I'm not. Um, but we're getting in now to Elios, our first map as we focus back in away from the jokes. Getting back into Elios with the beautiful statue of the Junker Queen. There's a lot going on that we could be seeing because we had a bunch of changes come in just yesterday into the live game, what might we, we be seeing? Are we going to be seeing the Casty? We're going to be seeing the May? What's the situation here, Glitch? I, I had no idea that those, that those changes were implemented in just yesterday or yesterday. Uh, we may be seeing we may be seeing a May here. From what from what I've seen, May got a, just a bit more of a buff, and as well as some other changes from heroes that I, w- I would like to see. But so far, the only thing I've seen right now is these two teams running out with a uh, Widowmaker. Scratch that. Valley will swap over to Symmetra. Yeah, you do still have the Widowmaker over on Symphoden, which definitely is a choice. Val- Valori switching right back to the Widowmaker after that teleporter going off, allowing their team to get a bit better position on the point. But this is going to be the Widow duel. Now, Widow is definitely not as strong as she once was. Those nerfs that she got were huge. Really reduced her long range potential on maps like this, but don't tell that to Valori. In the headshot, taken out Simp, but going to get immediately burst down by Storm Hornet themselves. So even here, four to four, both these teams solid position from Quetzalcoatl to take position on the point. Gigafart going to go down on the side of jam nice you is nice not very good a big cancel there from the wrecking ball keeping jam you do in it but you'll lose both your supports and that wrecking ball can only do so much as they bounce around there they're looking a little stuck they might get caught out very quickly um as they're still able to stay alive going into this next fight 
Quest Kodo still has control of the point, even when this crappy junkyard junkyard like fight is still going down. <laughs> and it looks like Dukes just cannot seem to get a hold of this point to save their lives. Yeah, Jam, you will hold will just be struggling here and especially with those with the trouble with the resurrection and losing their supports really early and you see it again simp goes down python goes down and that's just another lost fight there and they're still kind of staying in staying in or staggering i consider it to be more staggering than anything else dmu is not really particularly winning this fight they just kind of just Building up ultimates as much as they can. That's the only benefit I can really see of why JMU is going in like this. Yeah, mm. and there is the advantage that Gigafark went to respawn back in, and Python just gets bursted down once again. Really unfortunate there from Python, just getting taken out by Shantae on the Echo, and Quetzalcoatl looking absolutely dominant. And and pose is gonna gonna be lacking the pose by the time Shante is done with done with them by by looking at what the what Shante is just doing to all of Dukes really and they have Val Valerie just going with a storm hornet like what is happening here? This is definitely a bit this is a bit clowny but it's all the way of kept the quad so far over time going to be ticked over. There's the nano coming in onto who I don't know it did get burned down. And Python is just unable to play the video game. Un not allowed to play the video game. Impulse is going to take out Shantae, though. Potentially a some potential for a retake here. And there, that's that Widow nerf coming in on Glory, making them have to play a lot further up than potentially they might want, but getting a lot of value regardless as the staggers come in from Quetzalcoatl. They've got so much they just need to take down this wrecking ball quickly before the Ana has a chance to jump in the Ana doesn't even get the chance to jump in samba is going to walk in as well and it's all going the way of quetzalcoatl they're gonna get the first round 100 to zero yeah no this was in quetzalcoatl's favor as soon as the point unlocked and jmu dukes kept on trying to contest the point without really taking a reset fight or just trying to get the numbers back up as it, it's hard to take a point against a team like quetzalcoatl but it's even harder when a when you have when you're lacking numbers and you're lacking just firepower against a, a bigger cannon a big cannon like quetzalcoatl so not to show what what they could have done there besides just regroup and reset yeah, you definitely saw a bit of potentially rust on the side of uh, on the side of JMU Dukes, where it seems like there were you know a full ten seconds in some cases where they probably could have pulled out of a fight, but just decided not to and tried to stick in. And sometimes fighting at the last man, it just isn't to the advantage. Now coming into this next fight. Some interesting changes. You have Pleb on the Life Weaver, uh, Phoenix, and Shantae going to be sticking a bit more close together on that Mercy. But Pleb going to be the first to fall, but a trade out for Gigafart on the Mercy. Shantae is going absolutely wild in this back line. Takes out the Echo Mercy combo on their own. The Resurrection is going to come in onto Pleb, and Quetzalcoatl continue onward oh my god shantae shantae just by themselves just cleaned up the house of jmu dukes they J dukes's uh mascot is a uh is a bulldog shantae's the only the only bulldog i'm seeing right now in this whole entire game hopefully Duke, dukes can prove me wrong yeah it is early in this game this best of seven match so there is still a long ways to go, but a very impressive showing so far as Valerie and Shantae just go down. There's the sleep onto Valerie on the tracer. They're going to have to be able to recall away and take down Python. Valerie just lays down the Uno reverse card onto Python by Storm Hornet. <laughs> oh no, Valerie getting this tick onto Impulse. Dirty. Absolutely disgusting from Impulse, just getting from Valor actually getting taken out by that with that pulse bomb. Really amazing. 
amazing. And Valerie's just yeah, sitting in this back line, just farming the members of JMU Dukes. And th this is where really like misplaced fights can really damage JMU Dukes at this moment. You need to stick together and play play your five v fives as well as you can. Ooh, this a duplicate on from Impulse on Diva. Yeah, already. You've got some really big ults coming out. Gigafart going down. Python going down as well. Python off the map. What happened there? The Diva Bomb is going to catch on Tay, but there's no support on the side of JMU Duke. I'm not sure exactly what's happening. The Tree of Life going to come out from Pleb. Going to dish out the heals real efficiently onto the members of Kepa Colottle. And there's just nothing JMU can do. Unfortunately not, there's 93 second, 93 percentage for Quetzalcoatl just to play around with. There's the only people left is Python and Gigafire. Never mind that. It's never, it's just so important and they're not going to be able to touch as Quetzalcoatl is able to handily and easily take a map one and we move on, move straight up into map two. Yeah, they absolutely will. And there's, it, that was just insane. Absolutely incredible from Quetzalcoatl. I mean... Dominant. Now we get the pick, the play of the game, that headshot onto Simp for Din, and then just the absolute clinic getting put on thanks to Valerie on that Widowmaker and just doing some incredible work when it comes to the, when it just comes to that Widow and that headshot, those headshots. Right, and Shantae, I think it's the biggest problem that Jamie Dukes has is, is Shantae, because, like, easily. And and Quetzalcoatl would be, like, foolish to to sub them out. Shantae's doing, like, God's work right now. He's he's out here just going going to the back line, being, being a pressure for them on the front line. And what do you do it, against against someone like Shantae? Pray? Pray that he misses the shots. <laughs> <laughs> Or or just um, uh, it would make it maybe a hit scan, uh, possibly a Hanzo, but who knows? Uh, I'm not too sure. I don't have the answer for that. Yeah, I don't have the answers either. But at this point, I mean, like you said, with Shantae on that Echo, you might want to bring out some more hit scan. You might not want to try and take that Echo v Echo duel as Shantae has shown themselves to be a very very skilled hero on that echo so you might just want to try and counter the echo instead of trying to take the duel with the echo mm -hmm. now going to our map two, shambali monastery jamu dukes has subbed out they've subbed out gigafart they've put in i believe silverstein yes. and it looks like we're going to have jamu or sorry we're going to have uh quetzalcoatl on the attack yeah, hopefully our wonderful and great uh, observer is able to switch the names before, <laughs> but before we head into the match, because that would be really, really confusing for our audience. And just in the case that Dukes or Quetzalcoatl's win, never mind. <laughs> They're swapping the teams now. Yeah, there you go. You've got some really great. Uh, we have a really great observer a uh, team of observer and producer with Melu and uh stacks of block so really appreciative toward them and um just i'm loving the like banter that we're seeing in this lobby right now of um i don't know if the people can see that <laughs> i don't think I, people can see that yet. they can't sadly and they won't see the they won't see the banter but trust me when i say it is pretty pretty funny <laughs> now I mean, going into the next game, like you saw, this was really dominant mm -hmm. for Quetzalcoatl. Mm -hmm. They've played incredibly well. And, like, for JMU Dukes, the question is how... Where where did you even begin? Because losing 200 to, to zero... I mean, that that's the thing. Losing 200 to zero on a control map not even being able to take a percentage is not a good sign you can definitely come back from that and especially in a best of seven series you have oceanic quantities of time to push back with but you don't have forever there's a lot of really important 
there's a lot of really important points for that you really just have to, uh, to some extent, it's do or die. Right. And I think going down to zero, it's not as bad in a best of, as it would be in a best of five where, oh, now it's match point. We have to reverse sweep. But you really want to take some kind of advantage. You want to have, you really don't want to go down to. Right. And then you're just, you just have a lot of problems. Right, yeah, and in terms of problems that JMU Dukes faces, uh, my my answer to that question is, where do you want to start? <laughs> we can start with the supports that that can't really be pressured because the DPS is doing is moving around too much and they're just getting a lot of space. They're taking the space basically for a discount, if not for free. Then you have the tank. Then you have Bear, who's who who hasn't shown what he can do, but I'm sure he can do a lot because because that's what happens when you have Shantae and Valley as your as your two DPS and it's just and I feel I fear for JMU Dukes the problem has not really surfaced yet for what they can really do. Shantae is just the just like the appetizer you can say of like the of destruction coming coming their way. They have to contend with the whole entire five dogs and all that squad's a total. But I think that they can do it. They can at least contend with them. Yeah, and that's the thing with Quetzalcoatl is that they have shown just how scary they can be as it felt like we saw more we saw like the dps and the tanks there was no slouch on this team it wasn't like oh well mm -hmm. if you counter shantae it's fine it wasn't no, oh you know if no. you counter valerie it's fine it's if nah. you counter valerie and you are like looking at valerie then your back is to shantae and shantae is going to absolutely eat you alive and vice versa now coming into this one you have the rush composition against the orissa composition you definitely like the Hello? you definitely I like, like the Ramatra. You like the Ramatra more uh coming out rather than the Reinhardt for this rush. Big Maywall to prevent them from getting into any uh really good defensible positions, but there's a huge icicle hidden Phoenix from M Pulse. Really great stuff already as the cart's gonna start moving with an early fight win. And that's exactly what we wanna see. That's what we mm -hmm. didn't really see from JMU Dukes is that they lost their Baptiste and Quetzalcoatl disappeared. They got out of there. I, I love that aggression. And I, and I, and I pseudo cut, cut you off earlier in your, in your early analysis when this game first started, but I love that aggression coming in from JMU Dukes. You saw them just pushing in onto, onto uh, Quetzalcoatl and they were able to get a support elimination out of it. Let's see if they can carry this on. Yeah, that is the question at this point. Pushing forward, Python getting taken down, uh, getting taken down on this support. Really, really vulnerable, and Valerie is just finding that head. Shantae going to have to back off, but again, whenever Shantae is ineffective, Valerie is there picking up the slack, and whenever Valerie isn't as effective, Shantae is there to pick up the slack, ticking off a final blow onto impulse and really getting Quetzalcoatl back on track. Jamie Dukes had that one like fire moment right at the beginning, but they needed to find a way to light that fire back up if if possible. And I think that they, I think they can be able to do it, as long as they just avoid silence coming in from Valerie you and ooh and pressure them enough to just get them away from their angle. No one can hide. Yeah, there's the Here's the ult from Valerie trying just keeping an eye on everyone there. The Tree of Life. I love when the Tree of Life is used to both give the healing and also to block off the angle. Because that is when it gets so much use. There's the new magnetic grenade from Shante just thrown in. Oh yeah, you can throw that thing in from just 10 years downfield as just pushing in. For Dan, going to get a pick on the Shantae. The ult from Stormhorn had taken out Phoenix. A lot of ults getting thrown out. Every ult in the bucket, it seems, but it does win JMU Dukes the fight. And the only the only ultimates that I say that have been saved is Bayes Terrasage and Shantae's Dead Eye. But those are very very situational. It, or at least more more so for Shantae's than than Bayes. Yeah, Big Maywall is able to. A, is able to get uh, that first point for JMU Dukes. 
the really sizable ult is gonna be thrown in and then taken out. Shantae gonna get the pick onto Simp. And I'm interested to see with the Life Weaver and the Orisa combo, if they're going to go for the Life Grip um, Terra Surge combo that you might have seen a bit on Reddit and or Twitter. I have not I've not seen anything like that in terms of in terms of the, the life grip and then the terror surge, but the only, the only thing I am seeing is that Jamie Dukes is putting on the aggression towards uh towards Quetzal And this is and this is very it's very nice to see because I did not want to see a just a straight up uh four O without like a some type of fight back coming in from either side, whether it be Quetzalcoatl to Jamie Dukes or Dukes to Quetzalcoatl. So this is very nice to see as a caster and as a fan. Yeah, and you really always do want those longer games. You do want to see a competitive game. And I think we might be seeing one here as just the push forward, getting repelled. There's Jam, you do throwing out the haymakers. Storm Hornet dishing them out. The immortality field is going to get thrown out and going to get completely deleted. Storm Hornet, two from the blizzard. And even with the big investment, Storm Hornet has that ult up next. Storm Hornet just went on, went on and got two, I think maybe three, with that just incredible amount of play that he just made for for uh, JMU Dukes, and just made so much space for for his team to just capitalize on and take advantage of. Now going forward. Not a lot of ults on either side. Well, I say not a lot of ults. There's three ults on the side of JMU Dukes. They have the opportunity to keep pushing forward as the dragons nearly catch on off guard, draws off the ice block, and they just get caught sitting in that ice for too long. The beat's gonna come in. It's gonna enable the JMU Dukes team to push in even more aggressively, get those big picks. Valerie is gonna try, gonna take the pick onto Python, but they're going to get hit by Gigafart absolutely blasted and this cart with a few less people on it is going to keep rolling through and this is probably the hardest part for jamie dukes to take advantage to take uh, control of they have they have lesser numbers than they cross code in the long run because respawn time is respawn timer and respawn uh, is closer to, towards the payload you, you got it you got to we consider all your ultimates and abilities that may come online, and this is gonna be hard for Jamie Dukes to take in, to take in. But momentum is on their side right now. Yeah, Jamie Dukes, they did a really smart thing by giving up what could be an advantageous position for some real for the response to come in. That's exactly what we want to see from them, and just catching all of the members of Kepler Quadro away from where they want to be. But bear on the cart with the terror surge is gonna take out Simp. Storm Hornet, though, has taken out the May, and they are looking to throw some punches. They're going to take out Valerie, and it's just Bear, the last bastion of defense. Going to get hit with the Nano to try and keep them up. That damage see what can do. into the heals is huge. Can they take down... Oh, they can't take down Storm Hornet. Storm Hornet stays alive. That's huge there. If they took out Storm Hornet, that could have been an opportunity to turn this around to get the stall going. But as it is, they can't get it started. There's no fuel. The ripcord's been cut. There's just nothing they can do. It's just lambs to the slaughter. A minute and eight seconds on the clock. You rarely glitch. See teams in competitive play get past, like, first point right. on Shambhali Monastery. Second point, almost impossible. Nigh on impossible. Mm -hmm. The chokes mm -hmm. are so, so tight. Well, one of the things that they I... They finished with a minute Go and ahead. eight seconds. They finished with a minute and eight seconds left on the clock. Mm -hmm. That's insane. That's such a turnaround from what we saw from JMU Dukes on our control map. Such a turnaround. One of the things that I that I don't particularly like about, well, I like and dislike is the about coordinated play is that uh, there's just some maps that I just don't get to see. So, and and you and you say that Shambhali is one of the hardest maps to really contest on, and I and I can't really refute that because this is my first time seeing this map, and it's such a shame because it's such a nice map, such a pretty pretty map. Again, the Overwatch two Overwatch two maps have been like stellar, at least in my opinion. But again, in, in terms of like competitiveness, I I think that Quetzalcoatl 
really, I dare I say, underestimated uh, JMU Dukes after that first map. And I don't blame them. 200 and 0 is 200 and 0. I, the numbers don't lie. And it's, it, like, Quetzalcoatl can't, can't rest on the lows. It's one map. Come on now, guys. Yeah, and I mean, I mean, we had more than enough reason to think that Quetzalcoatl was the team. And maybe they still are. Ashante's going to pick up that pick onto Sim, so it looks like it might, might have been all of them, the all Valerie on the quick Widowmaker swap, but there's the aerial superiority looking to come in. They need an explosive start if they're looking to keep this rolling and get themselves a big lead, but the oh, is low. Oh, JMU Dukes answer in kind, taking out Storm Hornet. The resurrection's gonna come in. Quetzalcoatl are able to get some picks and with those closer spawns with the trades they've got they're gonna eventually get this cart moving I look away from my screen for one second and I see that uh I see that Shantae got a pick onto Symphodyne what happened <laughs> what did something else hit him besides the fair rocket I believe it was because Valerie was on the widow I think what happened was Valerie must have hit like a an almost fully charged body shot or an almost fully charged headshot or just a headshot that was a little into fall off distance so that it didn't fully kill and then the Shantae's rocket uh either direct impacted them or something but Shantae is no slouch can tell you that and look at the ults they're charging up right now they've got three coming up on all five of them and they don't even need them. Impulse uses oh, that. There's a barrage. <laughs> Impulse just gets solo ulted and deleted. Wow, this is dominant from Quetzalcoatl. Shanta just used that blast for fun. <laughs> there's no reason to use that whatsoever. I mean, it was a nice highlight play. That's probably got a probably got a new clip for his for his or her uh, reel, but. In the long run, it wasn't needed. And here comes Valerie, uh, already in the back line. Just you have to just just don't want the one. And the other one comes in. Exactly, and there's the pulse bomb looking to be coming into the back line. Online, the minefield getting thrown in. Bear takes down Python. A really big interaction in the animal kingdom. Oh. The pulse bomb gonna not blow up in time to catch Gigafart, but. It'll negate a lot of that beat onto themselves, and they're just going to be caught up, completely stuck. And these are two teams who just really can't seem to do very well on defending, can they? <laughs> I can't. I have to be inclined to agree with you, but the clock's not really moving, and and time's not really uh, for Quetzalcoatl's side. Ooh, something nice shot onto Valerie. Yeah, really good shot there. Sim just pushing in so incredibly well. Now looking for some looking for some more progress. A lot of ults use. This is a chance for for JMU to really put a stop to this push. This they need to start taking some time away. This is a really good spot to hold. There's a lot of good high ground. There's a lot of tight chokes. This Ooh, is nice. the place. Bear's gonna go down, but it's the DPS duo, the deadly, dynamic, dastardly duo that is Shantae and Valerie wreaking absolute havoc. Coming soon to a backline near you. Oh my goodness. Jeez, man. Looking at Valerie and, and Shantae just doing work, and Shantae just wants a bit more. He just wants a bit more of that old charge to just go go in and, and have another barrage just to use it for <laughs> and, and watching these two just do work is so much fun to watch. And they're ready for the next offensive push too. And look at this. Yeah, already just pushing in so aggressive, just trying to catch all of these players, uh, pushing in, just trying to catch these players off guard and just get early picks. Impulse throwing in the pulse bomb and it will explode harmlessly. Bowie off in the side, just waiting for someone, some unfortunate soul to step into their line of fire and just get caught out. Draws out the carnage oh, no. from the Junker Queen, from Storm Hornet. 
There's the Rampage. Gonna catch two. Gonna catch a big one onto Pleb. But Storm Hornet is going to get absolutely burnt down. Bursted incredibly quickly. And with three minutes on the clock rolling into last fight, this is devastating for JMU Dukes. And Jamie Deuce just cannot find a way to just reset and have another full team fight because Quetzalcoatl just won't let them. I think the purposely just trying to trying to make sure that the respawn time is just so off putting that they can't just reset and have it and have a full fight. Yeah, this is them forcing the awkward fights. There's the barrage from Shantae. Not going to get much. Can actually get uh, a few picks coming in from the side of JMU Duke. That is exactly what they need to try and get themselves some opportunity here. The Resurrection coming in on Shantae, but the Mercy gonna go down for it so much. And the picks coming in for both sides, but with the spawn so close, it's going to favor JMU Dukes. Yeah, just like this what I said when Chris Koto was in the defense and nice in the mentality field coming in from Python. Uh, the, this this fight is going to be hard for Quetzalcoatl to win, even if they had the advantage to respawn. And as long as Jamie Dukes got at least one or two picks, they were probably they were they were favored to win. Uh, it win this in the long run. But now the teams are neutral. It all, it all comes down to who gets the most picks in this next fight. It really does, and those early picks are absolutely huge, and especially with those with that minefield rolling out. The pressure is going to come in. And they really have to have someone push in, but Shantae's gonna go down early from Simp on the Widow. Bear falls soon after. The time is ticking down, and it's going to be JMU Dukes holding on still. Might be getting the lead as well. Yeah, Coach Cole just needs to win. He needs to win at least one fight, but that fight is gonna be an uphill battle to climb, and time's gonna be eclipsing them. Uh, eclipsing Quetzalcoatl in, in in a few seconds, but time does not really. Oh, nice shot from Symphodine! Clever, really good job there on to Pleb just to delay Quetzalcoatl even further. Guarantee that 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 time bank is in their favor. That if we go to extra rounds, they will have the last attack. They will have the last word. Now pushing in, has so many ultimates, have the pulse bomb, have the minefield, two, three big ults that you no! can oh, use. Oh. And what? What the sh what shot <laughs> onto Valerie? Shantae now onto the Genji, trying to dish out the shurikens and the damage and some hope now for Quetzalcoatl with that pick. But Shantae is caught in the back line. Python has their number. They say I will be the first pick no longer. In fact, this will seal the deal. Honestly, if Phoenix goes down here, that's just solidly it for there you go. Gigafart going to go down on the side of Jamie Dukes. This is the only chance they've got. They've got the transcendence, but Pleb goes down. Phoenix soon to follow. Yeah, supports a, Storm down, your support is down. Your supports are gone. You can't do anything. The only one left there is Shantae, but even even then, you need some type of support to just keep you up and keep you running as <laughs> Jamie Dukes takes a map to what? But yo, we need a replay of that one widow shot onto Valerie. We we have to. We we just need I know we don't now we probably can't see it, but man, that was a nice shot. Coming in uh from Sipphodines onto Valerie and just get and at that at that point that point alone, that probably sealed the win for them. Yeah, that was an absolutely incredible shot. I mean, really turning it around, JMU Dukes. Just coming in, feeling entirely disadvantaged. Everything was against you. We were counting them out. And we had more reason than just, oh, the the control map didn't go their way. That's a quadl, right. as we were saying, were undefeated until that until they lost three to two, mind you in the tournament phase, in the semifinals of the tournament. They were as close mm -hmm. as you could get to perfect without getting into the finals. We had yeah. this idea coming in of like, oh, Quetzalcoatl is the favorite here. They thought, we all thought that JMU Dukes, definitely an underdog, and they're showing us that they might be an underdog but they're still a dog. Maybe they're, st <laughs> they're still a dog. They still are absolutely, absolutely wild.
Elliot and Elliot and uh, Shambali, I said that Shantae was the only was the only not 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 Shambali, uh, it was Ilios. Shantae was the only put was the only bulldog I see. And with the Jamie Dukes representing Bulldogs, that, that was that was disrespectful on my part. I apologize to Jamie Dukes. I am sorry for that. But please keep doing what y'all are doing. This has been fun. This is fun to watch. This is fun to commentate over. But nah, keep on going, guys. Keep on. Yeah, I mean you have seen just some incredible play. I mean, Elios was a bit of a, was very disorganized, a bit of a circus, but JMU Dukes, they cleaned up their act mm-hmm. and they are ready for the big time. Because, mm-hmm. oh my gosh, that was a clean that was a clean round of Shambali. It, it, it was, admittedly, it was getting a bit uh, scrappy at, at the end of it, but that happens in this in this type of game. What matters is that they won the map. And we move on to Kingswell, which is uh, pretty much the same thing, but just you you have to unlock the point first. Now, and as we've seen with half of Ilios and half of Shambali, we see that Quetzalcoatl can, can win at the controlling the point part, but what about the payload? And you said the reverse for Jamie Dukes. They, uh, they're not, they're not too well. They're not good too well at uh, unlocking a point, but they get that thing rolling and it keeps on rolling. I think what might even be a better indication here is that Kings Row. Ready for that. We all know Kings Row. Kings Row is brawl central. It is get in your face type brawl. It's Reinhardt, it's Ramatra, it's the Junker Queen. It is the place where May Cassidy is the composition. Even with the Cassidy nerf, even with the May uh, change, where her slow is not as long, but it is a bit more damaging, May Cassidy is such a good Space Nile tool. And it looks like we're going to be going on to the Winston on the side of on the side of the goat on the side of the bulldogs. And Duke's running with a bit of a dive sort of thing uh, with this with this sort of on this sort of map. All right, I, I'm with it. I'm with it. I'm. I can feel it. It's interesting. I don't know. The Orissa is also a, an interesting choice because Orissa does tend to. Arisa does tend to get into those close range com- uh, brawls with the javelin spin and with the fortify. She's a lot more of a close range combatant than she was in Overwatch 1, but usually you see more of those really close range combatants. But Shantae, when Shantae works, Shantae works. And just doing incredibly well already, JMU Duke oh, is nice. in a nice bit question. of disarray. Going to take out Valerie, though. Going to trap some of the members of this team into some really tight quarters where this Genji's going to thrive, but you're also trapped in there too, JMU Dukes, though. Find oh, whoa, 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 what just happened? Fight. Hello. <laughs> what? What just happened? We, I, again, I looked away for one second and everyone on the side of Quetzal Quetzalcoatl just gone. I, oh, and and Pulse just wants more. What in the, what is up with them? That's crazy. I don't think I've ever seen a... I feel like JMU Dukes just thrive in the chaos. I think this is what this is. JMU Dukes, I think they just thrive in absolutely crazy situations. And they're just making as crazy situations as they can get. I mean, they're coming in with the Nano Winston and it's working! How are they doing this? Wait, this is King's Row. King's Row is my comfort map as a caster, because I go, oh, what are they going to play? Brain off Reinhardt, or brain off Ramatra. I have not That's seen it. one single hammer man this whole time. Is per- I'm scared. The Winston <laughs> is doing well on King's Row. I'm scared, Glitch. <laughs> I, and we see, two, we see two Winstons, not just one, two. And uh, yeah. I think that, I, I think Valley's still going to... Uh, Wait a minute, is this... No one can it's basically the same thing, but supports are different. They're Ooh, going high nice. on King's Row and... Yo, Simpsons going, going, going crazy. Simpsons going crazy right now. Who, what? Absolutely wild. That's two picks for Simp. 
Oh my goodness, I don't know what is happening. I'm lost. I have casted Glitch. Glitch, I have casted for three years of my life. I We were talking about this before we started. I have gone by K-Wing longer than I have, I have gone by my legal current legal name, which is Lena. I have, I have never seen something like this happen. I have never seen Winston on King's Row, seriously, and Winston on King's Row neared and worked. I'm, I'm so absolutely beyond confused right now. And the scrappy effects just keep on coming as, as Chase is just coming in from left, right, and center. <laughs> Nothing makes sense anymore. <laughs> I was not expecting two, two wits just battling it out. Yeah, I think we have to take a pause. <laughs> okay, hold on. Yeah, we need this pause. We need this pause. Wait. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, boy. Oh, I'm... Fuck. Well, since we have this moment to pause, we might. We, if you're just tuning out, tuning in, this is a one-to-one -one, uh, map series with Quetzalcoatl taking Ilios, uh, map one. Then Ch then Chapala was taken by JMU Dukes, and uh, K Wing and your lovely caster here are currently losing their minds because I've also never seen. I've been I've been playing Overwatch for a good while now. I've never seen two Winston's just just be played on uh, on King's Row, and it works. Uh, at least for just for one side, because Stormhorn is going crazy. <laughs> Stormhorn is. <laughs> I, 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 ooh, ooh boy, JMU Dukes thriving in the chaos too. here. I mean, so okay, we do know why we had the uh, pause here. We did have a disconnect on the mm -hmm. side of JMU Dukes, so we're just getting that fixed up, and we should be good and ready to go. But. If you're just now tuning in, if you're just now tuning in, let me let me just literally read off the compositions right now. Winston, Widow, oh, we're getting back into the game. Winston, Widow, Genji, Lucio, Kiriko. Uh, and this is being played on King's Row. Hello? Yeah, just in, just in case you guys are new to Overwatch or you, you have, you've been away from the game for a little bit, this is mostly a boss on the map. And... And you see those two, you see those two monkeys jumping around. That's Winston. That's not a ball tank, not at all, not in the least bit. It's like, yeah, this is a. That's not a brawl tank, there, buddy. That is a Winston. But I mean, it's working out, which is the craziest thing, against this, against what would be a more traditional composition, and it does make sense. The more mobile composition is able to kind of jump around the tight hole, and just picks coming in both sides uh, both these teams a bit in favor both have pretty long spawn distances so this point does tend to lend itself to very scrappy fights as that primal rage comes in from that winston over on the side of quetzalcoatl it's eventually gonna be jmu dukes getting repelled but oh boy this is crazy yeah, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not, I wasn't too sure who was winning that fight because we was. I'm, I'm still recovering from the fact that I, that uh, that there's two, there's two winces on King's Row. I'm so used to that. Right, how it's being played, and oh my god, fights are just coming out. The sleep. Oh, what a sleep! Onto the Genji. That's nice sleep. That's Incredible nice sleep. move from Python. JMU Dukes. Python. I mean. I, I thought that Python might have been the weak link. I saw Python dying a bunch early on, but it turns out Python was just waiting, was just waiting for the moment to release those anime training weights, let them shed and just show their true power. Their theme song's playing, and oh, is it lovely as Zimferdin over on this angle is just catching everyone, is just, Really just making Quetzalcoatl play around this Widow and how scary she can be. With 60 seconds remaining, this card is going to push through. We're going to have around two minutes on the clock going into third point, which can be good, can be bad. But after some really impressive fights, you have a big old bank Ooh, nice. for, the, for the Bulldogs. And oh my gosh, Sim. Oh my gosh. 
<laughs> Super Dean is going insane. I don't think he's he hasn't missed much shots on Widow ever since this ever since the gates opened up. Never mind that one. Oh what did he redeem himself? What in the world? Oh my gosh. Simp whoever they sent for must have been like you know, I'll give you, someone must have been like, I'll gift you a tier three sub if you pop off on the widow. Cause oh my goodness, they're absolutely going wild on this widow. Oh my gosh, and he has, you can't and he's keep doing going. this. He's still going. Shantae and Valley cannot find an answer for Symphodyne. I th I think I'd be able to say that statement out loud because the damage they've been doing in the first two rounds. But here we are. Antinade! Triple Antinade! It just demolishes Pleb. The trace is gonna go down. I mean, Python is going bananas. I don't know how else to put it. Python is going absolutely insane. These snipers on the side of JMU, what are they feeding them? Because, oh my gosh, get me a bowl. Maybe I'll get out a. Maybe I'll get myself out of gold. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is crazy. This is disgusting. But Gigafart gonna go down. That could be a bad start for this uh, final fight. Territory impulse going down low as well. It's gonna be scrappy on the point, but I mean they're going to end up. Oh whoa whoa whoa, whoa 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 hello hello. From? Oh, he would have got that headshot on to on, on to soft plus. I would have been, I would have been, I would have jumped on my seat. You're gonna take. Where is, where is this happening? Uh, Score. <laughs> oh my Zero lord. To three. Switches. Dive works on King's Row. Dive works on King's Row. Apparently. Simp for, Simp for dying. Absolutely pops off on the Widowmaker. Python on the Ana is an absolute win is a giga win welcome to the twilight zone <laughs> um this is crazy i mean we i feel like i should just like find a way to like get the memory eraser gun from men in black and just yeah. like the map one out of my mind because map one symphrodyne couldn't get anything done python was dying first in almost every fight and now Python is hitting clutch sleep after clutch sleep, clutch ante after clutch ante, and Sim 4 Dine is just killing everyone like it ain't no thing. I don't know how to, um, I don't know what to say here, Glitch. I've never seen a game like this. In three years of casting, I have never seen a game like this. And we're still rolling with the Winston cops as well, cause wow. it's, it's cause it's working for one side, let's try it with the other. And, and Symphodyne just turns something on in their brain. I know, cause it, it it's just like a switch, it's like a mental switch. That okay, let's just let's do this. They're going off. Okay, never mind. Python's getting doped on, and and the yeah. first one eliminated. Oh no. I mean, just incredible stuff already as we're looking in. Uh, getting pushed out. Impulse though, gonna find a pick on the Valerie, but Shantae reminding us of map one. If I noisy, if I hit myself, that's not the noisy cricket. If I hit myself with the memory gun from Man in Black, I'd be remembering it just right about now as they are putting in a good word as to why they were the name on our lips the entirety of map one. As they push in incredibly aggressively Ooh, and take nice. out Impulse. But Symphrodyne is back with a vengeance. I'm so is, excited. Is that Symphrodyne or Symphopine? Because I can I can tell the difference between either one of those two from the way that Symphrodyne is playing right now. This is he, he's been able to hit shot after shot, and not not particularly during that first part, but during, but during right like right now he's he's been hitting like semi decent shots. Oh yeah, incredible shots coming through from Symphrodyne, just Ooh, nice. really great, great chase from Simper Horn from Simper Hornet. I'm go I'm going. Why not? Sure, sure. <laughs> hey, Simper if you Hornet. feel if you feel so inclined, but uh, Hornet just going incredible, doing incredibly good, chasing down, chasing down that Genji kill, and now 
you're trapped here if you're Kevlar Quattle. You need to push through these arches, which is a tough ass. I mean, when you have a fast mobile comp like like the comp that they're running right now with a Diva and Chaser Genji, it's, it's going to be easy. It's just the supports that I have an issue with, with when I'm trying to get under those arches, but it's okay. It was, oh, Impulse just says that with all with everything that I am saying right now, K-Wing, Impulse just got one. He's looking for one more. He is he is able to get one more. Oh, what? Good job, Beyond the Diva. Just rolling in, ready to dish out the bomb. It's Winston Diva Dive. Am I in Overwatch 1? I Oh, I'm so happy to have woken up in 2018. This is, I'm, I'm losing it right now, Switch. I'm losing it. I, I can't get over this. And the, and the card is stopped. And this and this did not happen for Jamie Dukes. They were so far into the point. Oh, nice, nice uh, anti uh, Nades, but oh, Nanoblade comes again. Oh, the Nanoblade. Giga Fart gets taken down, getting sliced, getting diced. And it is Shantae picking up three, doing incredibly well. Make it a quadra, make it four. Picking up four right at the end there with Impulse. Okay, now if I can get my thoughts in the water before Quetzalcoatl <laughs> brutally interrupts me. Man, I remember what I said. Man, just move on. Just move on. <laughs> oh boy, this is crazy. Um, I, I am just, I'm just beyond reproach right now, as with just how insane Ooh. this is. And really big dive in, but going to get punished for it is Storm Hornet. Now some good damage getting dished out. Oh, Stimp has to go down, switching on to the Tracer now to try and match Valerie on that Tracer, trying to take that 1v1, but cannot win it out. Now, a lot of time on the bank in the bank for both these teams, but thankfully, thankfully, you do have the guarantee, a guaranteed attack if you are Jamie Dukes. Now, if I'm the player, I'm not, I'm not wanting to take that, take, uh, take that, especially with the time on the clock. If the if Quetzalcoatl just gets us in, like uh, candy takes, like taking candy from a baby. Nah, man, you need to take as much time away from the clock as much as you can. You absolutely do. And now pushing forward, you really have to deal with some impressive ults, the copy, and you just have to deal with Simperdin, Simperdine, because I mean, with those headshots. They can do just about anything, so it seems. And I mean, even with this ult, this really big ult bank, the nano and the blade, it's gonna take out Simper9 already. Two picks for the Genji, for the absolute madman, Shantae. Pleb is down, Pleb is down, this is important. Pleb is down though, that could be really big for the recontest bomb. Coming in over top, not going to find any picks. Actually going to D-Mech. Uh, it's gonna demech Hornet as the push coming through just a few more meters, rolling through, trying to get any contest on the point. It's gonna be quick and quickly dispatched. Round two complete with an impressive time bank on the side of Quetzalcoatl. That, and I, I thought Pleb going down would have been would have been the huge disadvantage for Quetzalcoatl. They said, "No, nah, that's not an issue," and, and they they were able to just keep the picks coming in consistently against Jamie Dukes. Now we're gonna see how Jamie Dukes responds because because they have less of time, they get to attack first. That they do, and we've we've saw we've seen how good that they were on the attack. So that a minute could be a bit of a carte blanche here. For them, they could take this, and you know, it's very rare. But sometimes you do see it of the teams taking like a minute, having that minute, and just like taking an overtime push all the way to the bank. Sometimes teams can do that. The question is, can they? They have to set the bar here. They definitely want to get deep into street space. Preferably, they want to get past it if they want to really take the wind out of Quetzalcoatl's sails, they really need to be, they need to get deep into point B or into point C at this point. 
and if Quetzalcoatl uh, happens to happens to lose this map, this is going to be a huge uh, dip into the resolve and attitude. It's just mental towards the next map, but that's that's next map. This is this map, and this map is just going to be a war of attrition, a war of wills, a war of minds, whatever you want to call it. It's going to be a battle, and we're here to witness it. It truly that's is, right. and now pushing forward, you've got some amazing looks here. Already, Symphronite gonna get pushed onto, but the anti nade is there to try and kill oh, off. And a headshot onto Pleb, going to get deflected. Shantae going to take down Symphronite, but a oh, nice. big pick, a headshot from Gigaheart onto Valerie, and a quick fight win for Jamie Dukes going into the streets phase. Now we're getting into the overtime. We're getting into Jamie Dukes have a blank check. How much are they going to write on it? That's a very short uh, blank check. If we're being honest, as soon as soon they, I, the only thing that needs to happen is that Ben needs to get like a his explosion or the right the right combination of O's needs to be used for them to get the off the point and op and with impulse get already getting low into health is gonna be, make that that much easier for Quest Portal. Yeah, if they can push through this current point of, um, if they can really just push through these gates, it's a huge win for them. But there's the Nano getting in onto Hornet to dish out the damage, get themselves to that ultimate even faster. Symphonite, though, is going to go down the bomb, getting thrown in and... Oh, no! Oh, no! What? <laughs> Oh, that's that's so sad. It's it is definitely doable here. The three minute hold is very very doable for Jamie Dukes. However, they really would have liked maybe just a fight more because this is a this is two fights basically. Mm -hmm. You have one fight on the point. And then you either have a late fight on the point or a late fight in the streets phase. And you mm -hmm. want to actually have that late fight on the point because then if you restabilize, you can get another fight that's kind of staggered in. Regardless, it's two fights, maybe three. That yeah. is difficult. Yeah. No, or it's a difficult ask. Yeah. And this is assuming that JMU Dukes wins, wins all the fights until one minute. <laughs> Which, yeah, but let's assume that Quetzalcoatl does win all the fights. This is gonna be like, like a minute maybe, like like you said, and it's, Hello. Five, four, three minutes is a lot of time, and yet it's no time at the same time. It makes no sense. Time is a time, thing. Time is interesting. Anyway, if we're done being um, nice and uh, <laughs> introspective <laughs> and talking about the relativity of time. Let's talk about the more interesting thing, Overwatch, and how absolutely incredible Symphronine is on whatever hero they choose to play. The Tracer uh, just gets slept and cooked in the back line. Okay, well, I, I should just close my big old mouth and not do that, because that was a really quick fight there for Quetzalcoatl. And the staggers are not good. You really don't want, especially Python, to get staggered out like that. Python needs to get close spawned. If Python doesn't get close spawned, it might actually just fully be over. Python does get close spawned. There is going to be another fight here, but they need to hold basically at this at these arches for two and a half. That is a tough ask, and you really can't lose your brig that early. Gigafart stays alive barely, just barely stays alive. The margin for air is so small that that you can't even see it through a microscope. This that's how small the that's how small the air size is, and this, thankfully Quetzalcoatl is making mistakes as well. They're getting a bit too aggressive for their own doing. Yeah, but the problem is the reason why I said you really wanted this that second fight to not be in street spaces. Look how close those spawns are. This yep. has become a now monumental task, and your spawns are in point C. They are basically 
so incredibly tough here. You need to basically spawn hold for a minute and change at this point. There's so much that could go wrong here. Any picks onto squishies on of JMU Duke, if that Brig or if that Ana goes down, heaven forbid if Python goes down, it's over. It is over if Python goes down. The card's gonna keep pushing forward. Big recall. Oh, There's the Nano Blade. Blade it it might just be it if this Nano Blade oh, comes no in. Big stun! Big stun from the rally. That new rally comes in. The pick still comes in, Gigafart. There's the there's the bomb getting thrown in. Both bombs, bombs getting thrown, thrown in. No, gotta watch the point. You gotta watch the point. You gotta watch work. the point. It doesn't work. They barely stay on the point, but the diva is gone. Can get back quick, but with Python gone, it will just be to see this final capture come through by an inch. Quetzalcoatl soar a little bit higher, and they're going to go up two to one. That's what I like that. But in analysis time, that 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 would that would. That would have been hard for anything to go to be up against. Uh, Quetzalcoatl had the advantage uh, going going into this, and as you said, as soon as one of the squishies died on the side of Jamie Dukes, this is this is an uphill battle to climb. And if one, and two more squishies die, that's it. And, and that, that's the end because V spawn times is is not going to be a it's not going to be in your favor, and it's just hard for Jamie Dukes at that point. That could have won either way. It really could have. That was a lot of that was pretty difficult um so we're going to be quick um we're going to take a quick break while quick break. our um while we have a uh small break to catch our breath in that incredible king's row map and um don't go anywhere because we just saw dive on king's row who knows <laughs> what's going to happen uh now that we've just seen dive on king's row because that was crazy and i don't know what else is going to happen so stick around and let's find out together if we, i oh. have to see what's happening with this you have to see what's happening <laughs> with this. you can't don't leave me here with dive on king's row you can't do this to me we're gonna take a quick break and then we'll be back we'll see you soon See you later, guys.
summer breeze It's your holiday Let us dance all night To the morning light Come on, move your feet Let us dance all night Shake your body left to right Celebrate a life Let us Let us dance all night, shake your body left to right, celebrate a life, island of paradise. What person? What? Welcome back to um, to the wonderful, wacky, um, absolutely banana bonkers, um, Marmoris Esports broadcast here. Um, if I sound a little deleted, uh, defeated and confused, there's quite a reason for that, which is this game... Oh boy, glitch! Has this game been a touch silly, perhaps? Which one? You have to be more specific. <laughs> All the entire thing, the match as a whole. Could, could could you possibly be referencing the complete blowout that we saw? Quest Codal, the beat down that Quest Codal gave Jamie Dukes in Map One, or maybe a bit more, a bit more, a bit, uh, a bit more of a bond burner between on Map Two or Map Three on uh, Shambani or uh, or Kingswell. Uh, which, whichever one you have to be a bit more specific me here k wing this whole entire this whole entire match has been a bit of a bit of a cluster of a variety of things for better or for worse there's been some absolutely crazy stuff happening i mean like just the way that you you told me the way that you said it like we had dive played on king's row and not mm -hmm. just like for first point First point, Five, it can work. Second four, point, a eh, little more tough. One. A lot more tough. Objective Third point, insane. In Completely insane. But no, no, no. Jamie Dukes may have convinced me. <laughs> hey, I mean, perhaps we've also seen Simperdyan just absolutely going wild on whatever hero they choose to put their mind to. But now we're seeing the rush come out onto Coliseo, and we're seeing a crash from Python. And we're gonna have to wait and wait and see of what that uh of what these two competitions could have possibly done because uh, it's just so just so much uh fun not fun but it's just so interesting watch these two teams uh uh just go at it and combat each other absolutely and I mean the completely insane um everything at this point there's no other way that i can put it other than this game has been insane 
And um, yeah, I can't. I can't run out of stuff to say. Really say about this game is if, if if you're just now tuning in, you you missed three really good maps to watch. Probably not the first one, but you missed you missed uh, you missed map two and map three, and it's just... you missed you missed two incredible maps and Elios. Um, but I mean, I feel like I said this before, but we had such a reason to say okay. You know, Quetzalcoatl, they're the favorites. And even more so after map one, they were the favorites coming in. And then, um, and then JMU Dukes just delivered an absolute haymaker in, on map two. And did incredibly well in map three as well. Like, this has not been the blowout that we expected, especially after map one. So... We're going back in. We're actually going to restart the map because um, the first team fight hadn't happened. So who even so might as well start back on even footing so we don't mm -hmm. have that uh, disconnect um, coloring that first fight because those first fights can be important when you're talking push. Um, I mean, technically with... the first fight did happen. There's just uh, like nothing really like happened. No one really like got picked off. So, so the fight did happen. What? I, I don't mind me. I don't want to be that you, guy, but what are you but talking the fight about? Did the, happen. First fight, the first fight <laughs> happened, but nothing had happened yet. Yeah. Right, so right. in the first fight, nothing had happened. Uh, man, it's just an old man rambling on. Just, just ignore me. Just ignore me. Just, just, for, the, just for, that, for that specific question. Old part, man just, just yells at old man yells at cloud. Old glitch mm -hmm. yells at cloud. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, 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 I yell at clouds in my pastime. Believe it or not. An established cloud yeller here. Mm -hmm. We're we're very lucky to have such an incredible cloud yeller in our presence. Yeah, and sometimes it's just too cloudy and it just gets it gets right up my gears, I guess. But anyway, back to this map. Uh, you you have to you have to think that Quetzalcoatl has the advantage in terms of both momentum and in terms of firepower because we've seen in an even setting they they probably win this. Because we saw in Ilios that they just had the advantage for most of it. When it, when it's a neutral, uh, neutral participation, Quetzalcoatl seems to be the favorite. Yeah, but it looks like Quetzalcoatl is going to be playing a bit of some silly here, taking a bit uh -oh. of a roundabout way with the wrecking ball. The hacks can come in and burst down there very, very quickly. They're going to roll through and try and cause some chaos. Quetzalcoatl is going to start pushing through, and Cipherdyne going to go down first. Bear really just re wreaking havoc on this wrecking ball. What the ball does so incredibly well. Now pushing forward. Some good ult charge here from both these teams. There's no picks. Uh, have really started to decide this engagement yet, but there's the hit. There's the carnage hit onto Bear taken out. And Ooh, nice. losing that wrecking ball really means that the members of JMU Duke can focus up and start working as a team like this Joe's composition would really want them. And Impulse shutting down the threats from the back. Symphrodine shutting down the threats in the front. They're just the dynamic duo to be that foil to Valerie and Shantae that we always wanted. Yeah, but Ben needs to hurry up and switch off of switch off the wrecking ball. He's not even not even like seventy five percent to his old. Yeah, no, just, it's, it's okay. Ooh, Gigavar going down is gonna hurt them though. Maybe just maybe maybe if it's just a little bit longer. Maybe Shantae though might be returning to map one form three kill for shantae looking for even more making it four and shantae just dominant shantae shantae has not uh let off the gas pedal ever since the last couple of maps and he still just keep on going that valley is looking to just step up and try to match impulses emp emp uh emp that's his first, first emp is already coming out with impulse using it big emp going to take a lot of health away from shantae's copy and gigafire is going to be able to burst him down very quickly both the copy and Shantae themselves losing a lot of HP um, with the pretty old now Echo uh, nerf of losing a 
a bit of HP when getting taken out of a copy with low HP. Now Storm Hornet, though, still showing off and taking out Pleb with the Carnage. Really scary now. As these guys have just sat in Colosseo for in this right in this hallway for most of the entire series. Right. And now, now that Jamie Dukes does indeed have the lead, it's just gonna be, it's gonna be they have momentum is on this side, is what I'm trying to say. Never mind that, the momentum is on Quetzalcoatl's side. Yeah, and now up one, Gigafred gonna go down. There's the pulse bomb to take out Pleb, and the hack onto the Mercy could not get the final blow, but Simp for Dying will. Both supports gone. That is a huge win there. But the barricade is getting pushed as uh, the members of Jamie Dukes are going to start to pull away. The lead going to be going to Quetzalcoatl, but that lead might be reversing very soon. This has been a back and forth series. What a hit onto the Cloak Sombra. It is more so the pullback than the actual hit, but I see I see what you're actually saying. This is this has been a back and forth matchup on onto Coliseo, and usually this map gets a lot of flack, simply because of the game mode. I, me personally, I like the game mode, but I see where people are coming from, and but both teams are kind of just going on and playing playing how the game's supposed to be played, and but neither team has so even it's so evenly matched that neither team can really get that uh, spawn advantage. That, those are that's really important that first can get the spawn advantage especially on Colosseo where that bridge hold can be so so deadly is gen generally the team that's going to win that first that hold that you can pull on the bridge is just disgusting really good minefield there to try and shut down the members of JMU Dukes Lab getting the rest Pleb getting that resurrection from Phoenix is going to help them forward. The barricade, though, is going to keep pushing forward. Can anyone contest in time? Contest is going to come through. That Kirko very, very low. The hack going to barely. Shantae nearly getting taken out, but a great life grip from Pleb keeps them alive. Valerie takes out Python, but it is just not enough there. The Sombra duel is won by Impulse and er, and close spawns unlocked for Jane for Jane Du Dukes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and we, oh, life was getting hacked and that's not gonna be good for it, but, but thankfully he's able Phoenix is able to rescue the other support. Ooh no. Whoa, what, what's happening with Jane Dukes? The boop onto the Lucio uh, from the Lucio er, Yeah, the boop came in. I I think it was from Shantae, I'm not mm -hmm. sure. They might have just been on to reset to get into better position, but I'm not sure as to why you wouldn't want to take that early fight. Might have just been a bit Ooh, of weird nice positioning. Kill. What a shot there. The uh, the boosted rockets are deadly from Quetzalcoatl and from Shantae in specific. Been absolutely dominant this entire series. Definitely an MVP pick if we choose to so do. Um, that all coming in from Storm Hornet will get to pick on to Pleb. But Shantae is in the back line, raining down destruction. Storm Hornet is just caught in the back line. Can't even get the pick on the bear. That bad barricade's moving forward pretty quick. Man. These two teams are just going back and forth and back and forth. This is a pendulum of a game so far. Ooh, EMP. EP looked to be coming, but he, the impulse got hacked before he was able to use it. That's yeah. huge. They do keep the ult, though, however, which is a good... Which is good. You don't want to lose that ult. And this is what we're talking about when we talk about that, that bridge hold. Is it so hard to break through? You have to use so many ults to even try and keep yourself up. And even then, they just have so much high ground that there just seems like there's nothing that you can do against it. Right. And Barricade might just stay there. <laughs> In two minutes and 45 seconds left on the clock, and the only ultimate available right now for Quetzalcoatl is Phoenix's, Phoenix's mostly ult and Shantae's barrage. For, for the side of BMU, you have, you have Symphony 9's uh, Pulse Bomb. And that's going to... And the third ultimate, the third ability for Tracer, basically.
Yeah, you have that, but you also do have the Amplification Matrix and the Katsuna are some great offensive ultimates, but the Barrage is gonna come in first onto Ooh, who I don't trade. know. It's gonna come in the trade, but Shantae is gonna get resurrected by the Mercy, and there's no such Mercy on the side of Jamie Dukes, but there is a Kitsune Rush, there is an Amplification Matrix, and there is a Determined Gigafart ready to take down Shantae for a second time and saying, stay down, stay down on the ground. And, oh man, I, I, I thought first the Quest Quarter was winning this fight. Now, now Jamie Dukes has just won the fight, and this is, again, this has just been a pendulum of a, of a game. With with either team being able to win this fight, and I'm not sure who I'm not sure, who, sure who's gonna win this. Yeah, Gigafart going to get taken down early with Impulse soon to follow afterwards. I'm getting thrown over top is scary. <laughs> Bear's gonna get taken down before they can get Goomba Stomp, but it's going to be a quick remake for Storm Hornet as they get taken out. And Lev though going down early is a big oh bye Shantae. Bye, Shantae. <laughs> Getting taken out by their own stickies, but it also takes out Python. This bot will be reversing. The question is, how long are they going to need on the side of Capsule Quad? You know, actually, in hindsight, when, when time runs out and Capsule Quad still has control of the bot, this is actually perfect, perfect position for them. They just need to, they just need to get it to to that other gate, and they're able to to win this on time map. They do have a chance here, but with time ticking low, there's not, there's some scary ults on the side of uh, their enemies, but the EMP is only going to catch one. The copy's gonna come in on from Shantae onto the Kiriko. The Nano gonna go onto the Kiriko to try and charge up that Katsune Rush early and get it for longer. The ult's gonna come up. They're going to throw it in, just really buffing the members of there of Quetzalcoatl, and this bot is pushing forward. One fight left, only the Diva Bomb and the Valkyrie on the side of Quetzalcoatl. Five seconds left for for Quetzalcoatl to be able to win to win this point, and just like I said, they're in perfect position because the gate did not go all that all that far. In. They just have a few meters to go, literally like like T minus five, maybe. Yeah, they don't have a lot left. Symphonite has to jump in to try and stop. They're going to get immediately bursted down. There's a, there's the Katsune Rush coming in from Python. The bomb from Bear is dropped in. Can it find anything? It finds the pick onto Python. That's a huge loss there. Stormhorn, it goes down. Gigafark again. And once more in heartbreaking fashion, yeah. that map going to go to Quetzalcoatl. Yeah, no, you have you have to feel for Jamie Dukes, who who looks like they were on the forefront for most of this match. Not even not even that. It, it, this was this is this went back and forth, no matter how you look at it, between Katsukoto and Jamie Dukes. But only one person were, were able to win this match, and it was Katsukoto going up three one, and they have they have match point now, and this is where you have to hunker down and say, okay, what can we do? How how are we losing fights? How are we losing maps? And what and how can we combat that? Yeah, that is the scary thing, is that as close as it gets, close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades, my friend, and this is neither of the two. Right now, you are in do-or-die situation, and we talked about it when we got into map two. You never want to go down two points. Well, guess what just happened? Quetzalcoatl are now up two points. JMU Dukes are in a position where this map, Nepal, could be their last. They're going to be yeah. swapping silver for Giga. So Silverstein going to be coming back in for JMU Dukes. Giga Fart going to be switched out. That is the only swaps coming in. Kepler Quadl are going to be staying the exact same. For JMU Dukes, Nepal is where it has to turn around. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, and, it's all over. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I feel for JMU Dukes because don't let the score uh, fool you guys, wh whoever's watching. This These have been back and forth games. Literally, besides the very first map spoilers, it, the uh, these two teams could have won either one of these maps. And 
it's just unfortunate that one of these teams has to lose because it, at the end of the day, there has to be a loser, there has to be a winner. But as long as as long as both sides take away something from this, then I feel like both teams win. I know that was I know that's pretty corny. It's true. <laughs> it's true. Yeah. I just hope that everyone had fun. Hey, hey, hey. You, 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 you're joking on me, but hey, it's true. It's true. That's how I feel. I, I'm, I'm not. I, I think, I think that it is half joking, half serious. I hope everyone <laughs> does have fun. We're playing video games for fun right now, and the two of us, we're shouting at video games for fun. Mm-hmm. We're, you know, I'm having we're not a blast. Serious. I'm having an absolute blast. So going into this last map do or die situation to keep this game going for JMU Dukes. They have gotten so, so close time and time again for the past two maps. It has been so incredibly close. Now it's time for them to put their foot in the ground and really draw a line in the sand. Because mm -hmm. if they can't, well, maybe they're going to have to draw a line in the snow. We're going to those snowy, cold peaks of Nepal. And I'm sorry. I should have apologized for this earlier. I have a smoke detector that is low on battery. I don't have any 9-volt batteries. And um, I, I don't know why it's beeping. I don't see why it's beeping. I can't fix the battery. It's just beeping. It's driving me crazy, too. And I'm sorry. It's testing your patience, just like just like this game is testing JMU Duke's uh, level of fortitude and how and how they're gonna be able to battle back against Quetzalcoatl. We saw in Ilios that they were not able to really put up a fight, and that's putting it nicely against against the 200 and O against uh, Quetzalcoatl. So how are they gonna be able to fight back against that? Dante on the Fara is going to absolutely demolish Symphonine on this soldier. That is a real bad start to this round. Valerie taking out Python. It seems like it might even be more of the same here with this. Really great from Phoenix to stay out of that line of fire and keep Cubs, and keep Shantae up and alive to just frag out. As we're seeing them do now, almost single-handedly getting those final blows and now going in incredible a bit aggressive to try and get late damage. And this is this seems like a bit of deja vu with Quetzalcoatl. Uh, 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 Valley loves the environment. I do too, Valley. But in the game, you know, uh, Quetzalcoatl unlocking the point uh, early into this match and just and just taking advantage of quick and quick and early uh, fashion. Yeah, and Symphrodyne really needs to get this soldier going. Really needs to start putting some pressure on Shantae. But it looks like Impulse is going to be the first to do that. Can the Resurrect be denied? Phoenix using the Valkyrie. That Ooh, really makes nice, that Resurrection nice. harder to deny. But the stick onto Phoenix. Impulse is deadly with them. So the chances here, the bomb coming in from Bear onto the point. Just nothing there for it. Shantae, though, is going to find the pick on the Simp for 9. No mercy needed. Shantae is actually going to burst himself down with their own barrage. I shouldn't open my big mouth. I said it once, I said it, I'll say it again. I need, when I'm praising a DPS, to shut up. Hey, Quetzalcoatl, never mind. I was just about to say, Quetzalcoatl's still in this fight. I also need to learn when to not open my mouth. I was gonna say that Quetzalcoatl's still in this fight and they still have the Tree of Life, but not anymore. They use both the supportals, they use uh, one of their, uh, one of the DPS holes, but they swapped off of that, so that's really like null and void. And, but, with Jamie Dukes in the forefront, this is a change from what we've seen in Ilios. Yeah, and I mean, just getting any capture percentage is better than what they had on Ilios, but now it's really nice to have that opportunity to get up some ca some capture point, and it's a lot easier, especially when they have all these ults. There's the big ult there, the Kitsune Rush Tactical Visor combo. Symphrodyne is dying to get closer to these people and just demolish them. Got their eyes on the tracer as well. Try to do the uh, hopscotch trick. Trying to get up on the platform did not work as intended. Neither, Gonna get the big on the Valerie though. Oh, wait. 
Aww. And a pickup too, so. <laughs> oh no. Aww, that super dying. Tried, tried so hard, then Valley gets resurrected and is uh, nothing. Shantae is gonna get taken out in a bit of a uh, silly little fight. The Pulse Bomb's gonna get thrown up right into the waiting mouth of. To that waiting mouth of bear, just gobbling it up right quickly. Incredible from Impulse taking out Pleb. We haven't been singing the name of Impulse with how well Symphrodyne has been doing, but maybe it's their chance as the percentage ticks over. This is last fight territory for Quetzalcoatl. They've got some ults coming in, but they need a long fight to get up to all of them. 90% for for Jamie Dukes to just try to just survive onto for the point percentage and this 99% and can <gasps> can Chris Wait, they deny overtime. Cannot. They deny overtime. Yeah, That's no, that was huge. huge. That was so amazing. That was such a good concise team effort to stop Valerie from getting onto the point. Cause look at that old bank. Look at that old bank. If they had let overtime tick over, it would have been our wrap. It would have been over for. Jamie or Dukes. It would have just been over. There's no two ways about it. It would have been over. Yeah, no, but they that, didn't. That, that kick was absolutely round saving. Potentially match saving. I, I agree. Jamie or Dukes. Incredible. Yeah, I agree. You're not gonna find any argument for me. That that was that was an incredible <laughs> pick on to Valley. I, I think that if he I think that if he would I think the plan was for Valley to get on point and recall. Wow. But he never got on point, so he never recalled. <laughs> exactly. But, that's it. And if he had recalled, then it, it then it would have been no point because you wouldn't have gone on to the objective. Well, it would have it would have ticked over overtime, and that would have given them a lot extra time to push in and use those like what was that like four ults that they had in the bank. They right. didn't get that chance. They had a huge ult. This is huge aggression. This is huge aggression. <laughs> yeah, this is really smart there to for Stormheart to kind of jump in and throw the vortex behind them, but. Symphrodyne, though, gonna get the pick onto Phoenix. It's even, even for both these teams, though, but Impulse gonna get taken down. Shantae is, nice. Shantae is going doing crazy. some, doing Assassin's Creed things right now. I didn't know that Ezio was in this game. Fifteen percent and counting for Quetzalcoatl, and this is a lot. This harkens back to our, to the third best map on on this map uh where Chris Cotto got got the advantage at, at the early going but maybe Jamie Dukes can get can get it back and maybe we'll see something a lot similar uh, from that last map maybe from the last as... point last point I'm sorry yeah maybe as now pushing it with the Sigma I think that's a pretty interesting choice to come in on to the Orissa with but we'll have to see if it'll work out I mean it takes out Valerie on the Widow now the Hanzo trying to push in again. The Transcendence getting drawn out is pretty huge because now you don't have that for any really big, uh, any big ults. There's the Blizzard going to catch four in its grasp. Oh, oh, that's nice. Oh that was nice Shantae. Shantae popping off on every single hero that they touch. <laughs> I wish I was as gifted as that. That was crazy. That was crazy. That was insane. And here, and here comes West Cotto just already taking advantage in, in that early early part of the uh, section that they have. Ooh, Symphodon getting killed in the valley. And Symphodon's on the widow again. This is gonna spell bad news for Quest of Cotto. It sure will. Symphodine has been deadly on this widow. And with the double sniper composition coming in, it's an interesting comp. It's a bit of a crazy comp. But we've seen crazier comps today, and if this keeps going, maybe we'll see even no crazier impulse. Get the pick on Shantae. They need to push in now. They have to get this 100 to zero, as otherwise they've got overtime. Big picks coming in though from Quetzalcoatl, and can anyone touch? They're denying the Sigma. The body block coming in. Storm Hornet going to get taken down. Impulse losing as well. A hundred to zero for Quetzalcoatl. We're going to our third round tiebreaker round. And Seven potentially the and potentially the last map too, because mm -hmm. because Quetzalcoatl wins this, they win this one tie series, they win, and then that the the uh, third place and the bronze medal, which by the way is what they're fighting for. Uh, uh, in case you guys didn't know, 
Uh, this is the this is the third place match. This is between uh, Imperial Phoenix Cross Cordo and James Madison University uh, Dukes, and they're fighting for the third place match. They've been able to just fight to this far, and congrats to both teams. Well, only one Five, team can get the bronze medal. Four, three, two, one. Now rolling out on this potentially final sub map, like you brought up, a lot riding on it. Shantae on the Farah Impulse on the echo definitely a pick that would counter the far but we have seen shantae work in more adverse conditions than the conditions on the snowy peaks of nepal oh, and Pleb going to be the first to fall that Ana going incredibly low and just getting taken out but symphrodyne and impulse are going to go quickly after and trapped in that small room there's not much else that you can do if you are jamie duke's first point cap going to quetzalcoatl and this is awful for for jamie dukes because you you exchange one one kill on the other side for four of your own and that's just something that you cannot do at this stage of the game 50 percent and counting and they're, they're, they're taking a lot of pressure coming in from quetzalcoatl and they need to be able to stop the bleeding they do, and they're going to be pushing through the small room on the right. Valerie going to be the first to fall immediately. A bit too aggressive on this tracer. Now Pleb, they're looking to try and find Pleb on that Ana, try and shut them down. It's a big pick, and if they can keep it going, they're they're able to spot them out, but they can't really get sufficient pressure onto them. Ooh, As nice they've got pick. just everything else to deal with, and Valerie is quick to get back to the point. Those blinks make it incredibly fast. Plus, you got Chante with the barrage, just going to be devoured. By... <laughs> he can't really do much. So Chante cannot really do much there. Hornet. Absolutely devoured by Storm Hornet. What an incredibly fun play to watch. Uh, as though Bear, definitely not a name that's been on our lips most of the time, but they're trying to keep this point in control of Quetzalcoatl for as long as possible, and that's going to be up to 65%, but if they can get these supports, that's a huge, going to be a huge stagger, especially Pleb, but they're not able to let them, they're going to be able to escape a huge loss there for JMU Dukes. Yeah, they're not able to get the supports with that, that's perfectly fine. Ooh, my foot being invested here. Hopefully for a, a follow-up from Quetzalcoatl? Being a really, an interesting minefield, definitely early, denying a lot of point and a lot of movement. But Symphrodyne just comes in with that ult and is going to take out Phoenix. And yeah, will lose their life in the minefield. But, well, I was going to say it's a pick, it's a trade you take, but... After that, it's not looking the best. Python, though, going to go down. It's going to be a scrappy fight to stay on this point, but the scrappy fight is going to favor Jamie Duke. Storm Hornet, though, going to get d and just destroyed as they're going to try and stay on for a little longer. Uh, Symphodyne just doing a bit of a safety dance, just trying to stay on that point for as long as they can. Keep this percentage ticking up, especially since they have the mobility. Same with the tracer, they have the mobility that if they get taken out early, they can stay alive. They can get back into the fight, but they're going to regress. They're stalling so well. With the Kitsune rush, Silverstein gets the pick onto Shantae. Silver Horn Storm Hornet takes a pick of their own, and somehow, some way, they've kept the point this entire time. Glitch, how they done this? I, I don't know, man. I don't know, man. They they kept this point up for so long, and and they still have the point, and it's still keeping it going. Again, this is what is for the map, and if we be able to keep this keep this match going. That that is, you know, an animal backed into the corner is the most dangerous one of all, and it looks like the bulldog is ready to bear the. Barrett's fangs, but Pleb is looking to take them out already. Getting the pick on the Symphrodyne. The bomb's gonna take out Bear is a huge pick. Silverstein goes down. It's uh, close, but down. Shante is popping off. Pleb goes down. There's a lot of ults on the side of Quetzalcoatl, but Shante going crazy. Keeps this point going and for a or a disconnect. I, I really do think there are a few fights that might have been decided based off of these disconnects, and it's real sad. 
I really hope we do not have to reset the map because. <laughs> because oh the, no! No way. That'd be, that'd be awful. Oh, no, you can't reset the map now. But let, let's let's go over what we know so far. Sixty nine percent for Quest of Kotal. They need to keep this up for. Let's see, six nine. 31, 31. Uh, 30, for 31 more seconds, give it a tip because that's, that's how percentages work in this uh, in this game mode. Uh, that, that's a lot of time considering the fact that I don't know if Python had their, uh, their ultimate. I don't think so. The closest ultimate that they have is Attack Advisor. And you have to compare that to a duplicate and a Pulse Bomb. That's, uh, yeah, no, I think, I think I'll take my duplicate and Pulse Bomb. Thank you very much. Yeah, and I mean, especially with losing that deep, with losing your your second support, you've got, I'd say one, maybe two fights. Mm -hmm. One fight and a scrappy fight. It depends mm -hmm. how long these fights take. You don't have a lot here. Python, that, I mean, that DC is pretty rough. Um, the Katsune Rush was used recently, but you still have a lot of ults on the online, or not the Katsune Rush, I'm not sure. Whatever Python Oh, no, Python cannot go down there. Recently. Python cannot go down there. They nearly get the pick on a Shantae, which would have been huge, especially considering Shantae has that duplicate Valerie. That recall is forced out early. There's that engage. This is it. If they can't get this engage, they need to survive through the pulse on. They need to survive through the duplicate. That is what's on the line online here. There's the ult using, getting taken out the copy used to keep the echo alive. It's even here. Both traces going to go down the point, nearly flipping to JMU Dukes in the first place. Pleb going so low. The Kitsune Rush coming out from Silverstein, trying to allow these players to dish out the damage. But Shantae is going to fall the point, flipping over to JMU Dukes. Oh, it might nice, just be enough. Yo. The melee and the rockets onto Valerie. Might just keep them alive. Bear, though, trying to desperately claw onto this map and keep it in their hands. But their health is low and their chances are lower. <laughs> JMU Dukes are going to hang on and bring us to map number six. Yeah, and, uh, and that that was uh, again another very very close one. As we move on to the next map of of this uh, match, and look at this play of the game, Shantae went absolutely absolutely ballistic here with the Blizzard and getting a team kill with the help of Quetzalcoatl as well. And and as before we move on to Junker Town, I just want to say that most of these maps, uh, five out of five, four out of the five have been very very close. Mm -hmm. Like like too close to even like to contend with. If I were betting now, I wouldn't be betting on this match. Absolutely. I mean, I I'm trying to like emotionally recover at this point. From what? <laughs> just, it, it, From which I one? know. Like I had a lot of jokes about like, oh, you know, I'm going. This is crazy. This is just incredible from both of these teams. Mm -hmm. Especially JMU Dukes. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, like you said, four out of these five maps have been close. I'd say three out of these five maps have been way too close mm -hmm. for any amount. I agree of with it. Like, I agree with it. Decided by one fight because it was Coliseo, decided by one fight. It was um, our last map. Uh, Kingsrow was a little bit further away. Um, I think Shambali was Shambali that was this. Eh. Shambali was about one was one fight away, um, and Shambali, Coliseo, and Nepal have all been like one fight away from completely flipping. This could mm -hmm. be pretty much any score that you wanted, uh, if you flipped those maps around. And I would say, yeah, that seems all right. So it's going to be. Um, it's going to be a really interesting thing here because it's going to be JMU Dukes on, or it's going to be Quetzalcoatl defending first, it seems. Um, no, names are swapped. I'm, I'm having a great time. Um, yeah, we, we, have, we, have, we have a be, great time over here. Yeah, I'm, I, I've casted a lot of Overwatch today. It's, like, <laughs> it's been a fun day and I've loved it so much, but I think I've casted like, Oh, it's probably been like 
double digits number of maps so far yeah. today. So mm -hmm. getting into that stage of being a bit tired, but Quetzalcoatl are going to be attacking first. It is up to them to show what they can do and who specifically um, is going to start popping off. If Shantae is going to continue popping off, if it's going to be Bear, if it's going to be Valerie, there's a lot of really incredible talent. Who is going to be the one to stick out in what, again, could be the final map here? Three to two. JMU Dukes is looking to get us to match point. Mm -hmm. Quetzalcoatl is still looking to finish us off. All I know is something has to give between one of one of these one of these four DPS players, either either Shantae or Valerie or Impulse or or uh, it's Gigafire, right? Gigafire was the uh, no Symphodine. I'm sorry, Symphodine. One of these four has to give, and when because because they can't they can't keep producing at this sort of level for for long. Because fatigue is natural in, in in all walks of life, especially in video games. One of these things, one of these one of these four players is gonna have to give at least just a little bit. And I don't want to say who, who I think it may be, but I do know it's gonna happen eventually. Absolutely. And I mean, like, if you think that we're tired right now, these guys have been playing out of their mind. Jamie mm -hmm. Dukes especially has mm -hmm. been back to the wall for a bit now and they've been playing incredibly well for a bit of time we started mm -hmm. this at i think it was 8 30 yeah, this has been 8 30 is the time yeah so this has been going for about two hours now mm -hmm. now the so good thing about playing... to start running into fatigue you really right. are right and and the good thing about playing is you don't really at least you don't notice the time you, you're not you're not really gonna feel it but once you're down about like like right now Probably like like map like six, yeah. You, you're gonna feel it, like right about now. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. It really beautiful is, thing. and I'm incre I'm really excited with Junker Town. I think that Junker Town, if there's ever a map that you were going to say, all right, JMU Dukes, what's your map pick? We're not doing map picks. We're doing side picks. Mm -hmm. Um, so. The team that lost picks their side. Um, yep. So Quetzalcoatl lost the last map. They decided to attack first. If you gave JMU Dukes a map pick, I bet you they'd pick Junkertown. The long sight lines are incredible for snipers. And even with the nerfs on the side of onto Widowmaker coming into right. season five, you really have to. You have to wonder if Simperdine might just go absolutely ham on the Widowmaker in the home of the pig himself, Roadhog. Yeah, no, yeah, no. Uh, the nerfs were nerfs introduced just for Widowmaker to not to not uh, dominate this sort of thing. But even with those nerfs, whoever has the, whoever has better Widowmaker in this sort of map wins the game. And so far, that's that's been Simperdine. And Valley's been trying, and I'm not gonna try to take away anything. Take, I'm not gonna try to take anything away from Valerie. They've been doing fine, but it's just, just simply just too, just too, too good. And we oh, do have we, we do have confirmation that Sean that Sean Tai have we, uh, 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 that Sean T is Sean actually pronounced Sean, Sean Tai. So sorry to Sean Tai. Uh, we have been mispronouncing that watching. name for so five maps. I'm so for, sorry. Yep, we are so sorry. Sorry, Shantae. Apologies. Um, we're we're absolutely doing our best right now. Um, and uh, uh, so looking to um, uh, do a bit better. Apologies again. Uh, yeah, Shantae. Um, and uh, I didn't. Yeah. So, uh, Silverstein, Storm Hornet. Uh, and oh, Simford, Simp uh, Simfordine is Simfordini. Um, so we're we're figuring it out. We're figuring it out right now. Um, <laughs> uh, apologies for the scuffness of this stream. Uh, like like I said, we're getting into that 
uh, exhausted moments and a bit of apologies to mm-hmm. um, the players because we do want to get those um, pronun- that pronunciation correct. Um, and how would say some for some for Dini? Dini? Uh, yeah, is Din Dinni Dinni Dinni? Got it. Thank you. Got it. Okay, but but not to be too uh, uh, unsympathetic. But moving on. Uh, <laughs> So, f- first map, I, I I could talk about first map all day. That that was kind of like a just just leave that to the side. The next the next four maps, holy, these maps have been bangers after bangers, and it's, it's too close to call which one is my favorite one. But I can tell you that that all of these maps have been very very close, and I think that you should go out of your way to just watch them because these have been so much fun. And me personally. Um- Completely agree. There's been so many incredible moments for mm-hmm. uh, some re- some really incredible moments with um, just all these maps. I mean, mm-hmm. like I it, it, we've had the script flipped on us so many times that it might as well just be. We might as well just hook up a generator what? to it with how much this script is getting flipped right now. Make some <laughs> make some energy power the entire eastern seaboard. Who knows? Right. Um, I can't even tell you how cl- how close I think this is going to be because when we thought that they were down and out, when we thought that they had gotten their close games, and now it was they had just run out of steam, Jamie Dukes. They mm-hmm. showed us that they still had a second wind in them, but now it's time to see if they have that third wind, if they have that fourth wind in them. As now they're pushing in with uh, what looks to be the Sigma composition and Simfredini on the Widowmaker as intended. I'm so excited. This is gonna be this is gonna be so much fun. Uh, I really hope I really hope I'm pronouncing right, but Valerie versus Valerie versus Symphony has been such a good, uh, I guess, mini rivalry you can say, uh, in this short in this short short game. And a quick note: Sauce 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 Boss uh, subs for Phoenix, and that's gonna, that's gonna be huge because we don't really need uh, Phoenix. We need someone with someone who's probably gonna be good for long range maps. So this this I, yeah. Sniper, be careful. Yeah, now coming in, you have that Widow duel that needs to come out quick, and it's going to be Valerie taking the first chunk, taking out the Sigma. Both these tanks are gone, and there's the headshot onto the Genji. Can Jansen for Dini take them out? Ooh. Yes, of course they can. What am I even saying? Of course Simfredini can take out the can take out Valerie. It doesn't matter. And we were wondering who was gonna win the first uh, the first winner matchup between Valerie and uh, Simpha Denny. Den- Denny answered that question for us quick, quick and fast, <laughs> with no with no suspense in the air whatsoever. As as uh, as the monkey is able to just contest the contest the card before he's able to just reach the time, just by a little bit more time off the clock for them to just get back into the fight. Yeah, Ooh, and nice, just. Simbridini seems to be the only one being able to pick up any kills. It's going to be a good start there and potentially the ability to get some close hold, but with the picks going the way of Quetzalcoatl as strong as they are, not a great start for Simbridini and the rest of JMU Dukes. Four minutes and 50 seconds left on the clock for Quetzalcoatl to just... Quest Cotter is just take advantage and use to, to however they want to, to however they see fit. Ooh, if it's like being used on both sides, neither of these widows are going to try to pick each other. Neither, neither of these widows, they have to be incredibly gutsy to try and go for a big peek here. Both these teams are probably actually going to just kind of stay into short, close range poke if they do anything at all, just for how scary those widows are, but the sights will eventually fall and we'll start seeing the more honest duels now as Sean T, Sean Ty comes in 
I'm trying my hardest. I'm sorry. You're Shanti, good, good. Shanti comes in, gets three, cleans <laughs> up incredibly well. Just amazing. Shant Shantai just was just able to secure this uh this portion of the map for for Quetzalcoatl to move on in this. And again, this is map. This is potentially match point. Or not potentially, but this is match point for Quetzalcoatl. They win. They need to win this map in order to in order to get to third place trophy. That they do, and that is why we have seen Sim for Danny, Jam, you do the entire team. Honestly, go so incredibly hard on these on these just really aggressive moments. But Sim for Danny is going to get taken out by Valerie on that Widowmaker. Just the trades coming in. Valerie actually going to be doing really well, but it's not enough. It seems like whatever team has the widow wins the widow duel loses the fight. Right, and that, that's the one thing I noticed as well. Because as soon as Valerie got picked off, the this, the fight was basically over. And because when you have a five before advantage and you have still have a widow maker, the, the, the it's gonna be hard for the for the opposing team to to take advantage of that if they can if they even can. And now you've got a Winston in your back line, just wreaking havoc, but goes in a bit too deep, gets themselves picked off. The Genji just barely staying alive. Shantai just narrowly able to stay up. Going to pull out the blade and try and use it. Gets a pick on a Gigafire, gets a pick on a Storm Hornet. It's two picks for the absolute Genji legend, Shantai. As soon as Shantai uses the Dragon Blade, I'm just assuming that he gets more than three kills. Because why, why would I assume anything less? <laughs> if it, if it was, oh, nice shot coming in, Dene. That was incredible. Sim, Sim for Dene, I feel just, just so amazing. Just such incredible uh, aim coming out from this man. So incredibly amazing. He's so good. Everyone, everyone in this lobby is just so good. Whoever you put on either, on either side, it's just been, uh, it's just been amazing to just watch and bear witness to. That they have, and Bear switching onto the Wrecking Ball. I do like this. Valerie is going to get the first pick on the Simfredini on the that Widowmaker, that oh, Widow Go well, One, ooh. and Sean Ty getting the real good dash right in the air really great to keep alive from python but not for a long bear just mauling through the members of jmu dukes and this is going from bad to worse for jmu dukes as they need to be able to find a way to stop the bleeding and stop the way to, to just keep momentum uh, from rolling onto them like bears rolling onto the rest of jmu dukes yeah, two minutes and 30 seconds. They need to put a stop to it here. The Nano coming in on the Storm Hornet. They need to get the pressure. Valerie on that Widow has the high ground. Symphrodini is gone. Sauce Boss is going to go low, but Giga Fart going to find the first pick. And Storm Hornet stays alive and dishes out those fists of fury left and right and left and right. Coming in and keeping it alive now and keeping this map potentially from going to extra rounds. Ah oh, man, this is the hardest part for Quetzalcoatl and I do not envy their position whatsoever. The only thing they can really do is try to make a sneaky play from under the bridge or do something else. But they do have all space to do and Shanti get it, is able to use the drag is able to use a dragon blade. Oh what a C9 that would have been. Oh that could have been really deadly there, but Shantai has the blade, gets two, but Sim for Denny gets two of their own. No blade needed. Nothing up my sleeve. And with those close response, even the two for two trade, even though it is so incredible from Shantai doesn't matter. It's just so close spawns for Jamie Duke that they don't even care. They're not even bothered. One minute and 10 seconds left for Let's go to try and make this point in. Uh, this payload go, in, go inside the objective. One minute left now. It's just, the time is clicked, the time is ticking, and the time is ticking. And the more you look at the time, the more it just goes down even quicker. 
Uh, they have one, maybe two good fights left. They got the Transcendence coming online soon. They've got the Infrasites, but that's compared to a Rally and a Nano. You get the Nano onto the Winston, you got the Primal Rage as well. Simp for Danny's gonna take out Pleb, gonna trade out, but you lose the support and it's huge. Sean Tai though is gonna get a pick onto the support of their own. Trade's going left and right, but what have I said time and time again, when you get this close to the end, no trades don't hide. cut it, Quetzalcoatl. They nope. can't just come nope. into the trades. They have to get picks un unadulterated. You cannot oh, just trade no. out with the ults that are going to come online. They're to come back in. You're going to get an unstoppable force coming in right on top of you. The rally is going to come in. The primal rage is going to come in. The transcendence can do you nothing when you've got so much. You got the raid boss in your back lines. Soft boss can try their hardest, but they cannot stop the rockin'. It's all just. It's all the dukes. It's all the bulldogs. The card actually going to push a little bit further. It's such but a scrappy in fight. It's such a end, scrappy fight. It's a scrappy fight, but the scrappy fights are in favor of Jam You Duke. If they get these scrappy fights, eventually, by principle of attrition and just having more people come back quicker, they will eventually figure their way out of it, unless they really can't get anything going. But they're getting these picks fairly well. They get the pick on the Valerie. The Bastion's gonna come out. The EMP is going to oh, come the out C9. as well. The Blade can't find anything. I don't say, I don't think it was a, a I think it was like a micro C9. It wasn't yeah, yeah, like, yeah. you know, small it C9, wasn't, small C9. lowercase C9. You know, yeah, like lowercase C and then like, like, Super text nine, like small, <laughs> small, small font, like you know, like top of the header and word. It's it, it's tiny, you know. It was probably going to go the way of JMU Dukes anyway, yeah. Unless Sean Ty could somehow somehow pull out basically a two v five with the blade, I which is possible. It. We've seen it, yeah. some incredible blades in the history of Overwatch, but Ready for eh, yeah, not too even. Bad. Yeah, even the infamous AKM blade. Yeah, you know, that's the most dangerous one of all. One of the blades of all time. Yeah, one of the, yeah, yeah, it's one of them. <laughs> it's one of them. It's definitely one of the blades. I mean, but it Sean Tai has been anything but AKM with that blade, because they have Correct. been I'd say they've been, you know, I'd say it's been sparkle blade kind of stuff. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm I'm th I'm talking like twenty twenty summer showdown when mm -hmm. they buffed Genji. And Sparkle just took it onto himself to just go wild. This is what Shantae is doing. Is Shantae is doing right now. Man, here we go. Symphodini is gonna just go ahead and try and get another pick. Here. Ooh, the picture may have just saved, saved him from a, uh, an elimination. Yeah, really important there. Symphodini and the members of JMU Dukes, they've got the golden box of victory, but it is deep in the halls of Junker Town, deep within the Queen's castle and the arena. A lot of a lot of places to go through and a lot Ooh, of nice danger shot. and not a great start to get hit by Valerie with a real great start. Really deadly and just gonna charge in on, right on top of the remaining members of the Dukes. And Shanti just was just able to will Quetzalcoatl to to be able to just push in on Jamie Dukes while they while they're just able to get their bag straight. And with the with the pick coming in onto Symphodini, it's just that much easier. Again, whoever wins the would have one v one wins this whole entire fight. It really is, and this would have won one has been incredibly important. And Storm Hornet going to start off with a big pick in the, in what we should affectionately at this point just refer to as the side show, because the main show has been Simperdini and Valerie at this Correct. point. But incredible stuff as well. The Dukes, Jamie Dukes pushing back in, getting two big picks. The Nano onto Bear is really good, but. I really love this play here. Jamie Dukes are just ignoring Bear. They're just jumping away from Bear, and now this long-range sniper duel of Valerie has three HP. A light breeze could knock over Valerie. Oh my goodness. 
Oh, nice shot coming into that. That was. I wouldn't have been able to hit that one. I wouldn't have been able to hit like every single shot. Yeah, no, I, I would not have been able to hit any of these guys because these guys are just insane and crazy. It's two minutes left on the clock for for Jamie Dukes to get to be able to push this into the first. This is the first spot, so they can continue to live on the dream of just being able to finish this match. But it's gonna be harder than they, harder than they may even think that it may be. Especially with the Sean Tai Blade coming up, when the rally, the bomb, uh, here, we here go. it comes, the Sean Tai Blade. It's gonna get Giga Farts. The Immortality Field can't even get down fast enough. Sean Tai will go down. But oh, it's no. just not enough. Storm Hornet's gonna ult and get slept, but Impulse gets the pick on the Sauce Boss, and that could be the start of something. But Valerie just headshots and shuts it down. One minute and five seconds left for for Quest of Cold to keep this point exactly where it should be and where they want it to be. I'm sorry, not where it should be, but where they want it to be, right there, right right in front of its uh, wheelhouse. And this is bad for Jimmy Dukes because advantage is not on this side, momentum is not on this side. The ultimates are, are the only thing. Actually, no, never mind that. They only have ultimates yet, so they they have to take that. They have to take fights whenever they can. And this just isn't good. No bueno whatsoever. It is not, especially losing to Ferdini that early. Levy is going to go down, which is a big, uh, is a big boon to them. They have that on up, but Python needs to stay alive for it to really matter. And Python's going to go down. It's just not enough. Shantai is deadly on this Genji and is going to keep that reputation. This is last fight territory. Gigafart needs to stay alive. Gigafart goes Gigafart down. down. That's yeah, no, absolutely just... huge there. The Katsuna Rush is not going to be online for any potential recontest. Shantai going to go very low. Going to get the Nano to dish out the damage to really shut down any hope of a recontest. Simfredin is going to go down. Shantai is low. Gets hit with the anti-nade. There's the Katsune Rush, but is there anyone there to follow it up? Empulse gets the first pick, but is taken down by the bomb immediately afterwards. Pleb is gone. The recontest could be there. Storm Hornet is there, dishing out some damage. If they can stay alive, especially if Gigafart can stay alive, that is huge, but Bear is there, sealing the deal, and Quetzalcoatl, where Earth and Sky meet, these dragons shall soar, and the Feathered Serpents have are now your bronze medalists. Incredible stuff. And let's just watch the Shantai Blade and be in awe. That's nice. So well done coming in for Shantai. Shantai, Shantai was able to just put on put on their boots, put on their put on the actual like game and mouse, put on the actual gaming chair and just go to work. Cause Shantai didn't let up at all. Not even a little bit. And that's just so much fun to see. And there's only so much you could do if you're Impulse or Symphodine, or, or Symphodine, I'm sorry, and or even any of the other uh, Dukes. It's it's hard because Shanta is Shanta is just so good, and this there's, there's just some just some people who who are just better than you. Yeah, that's okay. That was amazing. I yeah, I, agree. I mean we we kept talking. I think Junkertown was the least close map since Elios. Yes. This entire this entire series, Shambali, King's Row, Coliseo, Nepal have been incredibly close. Incredibly, yes. incredibly close. Yes. Um maybe King's Row a bit less so, maybe Shambali a bit less so, but we have had we had incredibly close games, especially Coliseo, especially um uh especially King's Row. Uh or not especially King's Row. Um, but regardless, we had some incredibly close games, especially Coliseo, especially Nepal, was what I meant to say. Mm -hmm. Amazing so, stuff. So, I enjoyed so, that so much. So MVP's Shante, Sh Shanti, right? <laughs> like I, I I feel like I feel like that's really the only one you can really go with. Because when I, you, when you look back at all the maps. You, you see one, you see one common common thread in all of them, and that's especially in that last one. That was Shanti. Yeah, Shantai, so. and Shantai, Shantai. We're oh, trying our best. Lord. We're trying our best. I just realized. I'm like, I'm like, man, I'm saying it right. The, I, of the fatigue I am. is catching all of us. Sh Shanti, but like, Shant 
Shantai. 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 Shantai is the MVP. My MVP, at least. I couldn't. I could not with any. Um, I could not seriously disagree with you. I mm-hmm. really can't. Shantai was an in an a nigh unstoppable force the entire time. This entire series, all six maps of it, an unstoppable force. Barely just scraped fights that seemed unwinnable and just lit up the kill feed any map that they were in. An amazing player, definitely deserving of the MVP for this third place match. And that is it, though. Quetzalcoatl taking your third place, your bronze medal. Incredible stuff. Fourth place going to our wonderful and amazing James C. Dukes. Um, uh, Jamie Dukes. Incredible, incredible game. And I am so happy to have casted it. Um, and so now it's time for us to wrap up, do our quick little thank you song and dance. You know the drill. Thank you so much to everyone for watching. Thank you to our wonderful, wonderful producer, Saxo Block. Thank you to our wonderful observer, Melu, for helping us out, for getting those really wonderful and beautiful shots. Thank you, of course, to our two teams for coming. And if you want to get involved in Marmoris Esports, if you want to play in a competitive environment like these teams that we saw, the Rainbow Open signups close Sunday. So you still have some time to get into the Marmoris Esports Discord. If you just scroll down, there's a link right to it. Easy as that. You can do it right now. Come on. Do it right now. Why not? <laughs> and you can sign up and join the wonderful people here in Marmoris Esports. Um, I just joined pretty recently, and it has been an incredible place so far. And I hope to see you there because um, this has been a really great experience. And I hope to see uh, everyone that came out cam- come back and say hi because this was really great. And I really enjoyed it. Glitch, is there anything that you have to say before we sign off and let the lovely people go home? Shout out to the, shout out to both the teams who are just putting on a great show. Uh, mm-hmm. Both all, all all the maps and all on see were fun to watch, and that's that's all I can really ask for. That's all I can really aspire to to just watch. And that's that's all I got. Thank you, and K Wing, thank you so much for being a great co caster. Yeah, thank you for being a great co caster as well. That's it for us here at Marmoris Esports. Again, if you want to catch more of Marmoris, you have the Rainbow Open coming up soon. You don't want to miss a single thing. Join the Discord. Hit that heart button and hit the bell so you get notified anytime some crazy, fantastic esports is coming your way at twitch.tv slash Marmoris Esports. But until next time... Keep on playing dive on King's Row. It works. I promise you. It works. Bye.